on Monday morning, November 8th, 2021. Recording our list, C Lane was pulled over and harassed by Ardmore, Oklahoma police on his way to a charity event. Here are accounts from that event from C Lane and the artists that he had with him. Yesterday, can you tell me what happened whenever you pulled into Ardmore? Man, when we pulled in, we got gas. Two cop cars pulled up to the gas station. Didn't even get gas. I don't know what they was on. We left, went up the street. A cop flashed his lights at us, saying that our lights wasn't on, but they was really on. They just wasn't super bright. So we pulled in the loves and they pulled up behind us. Lights on, 10 cars pulled, 10 police. Cars pulled up after that, took us out the car, handcuffed me, searched the whole car, flipped the whole car, uh, broke the middle console, was disrespectful, telling us that we stole the clothes in the back. We told them we was rappers. We traveled, you know what I mean? We got shit, but it was just, overall, man, it was a, it was a abuse of power, really, because they knew, and then they was antagonizing Amber when she was like, asking them what's going on and they like uh we see why you don't like us because she has signs in there about police brutality and they was just so that's why they flipped all of this shit man because i think they recognized who she was and they recognized who i was from that damn bumper sticker every time like i moved it from the back to the side because i kept getting yeah, no man over. i just like i said i think it was just it was an abuse of power and it was a time to be dicks to people who who stand for what's right you know what i'm saying so do you, can you explain how that made you feel to be placed in handcuffs even though you were probably the most respectful one out of the whole situation? Man, hey man, it, it pissed me off because I didn't understand, but at the same time, nah, I ain't gonna lie, it pissed me off, for real. I ain't gonna even lie, it pissed me off. Do you think that there is any immediate action that can be taken to hold police accountable for abusing power no nah, not immediate action because this shit been going on forever bro and it, it just they say they gonna fix it they make a big deal about it but then a couple months go by everybody forget about it anything else you want to add uh man just stand for what's right be yourself don't let nobody stop you from being yourself don't let nobody hinder you or, or discourage you from standing up for what's right, man. Always go against the odds, man, when you know when you know you're in the right. And you will never be wrong. You will always be alright. Recording artist C Lane was detained in handcuffs while police officers searched the car. So I'm chewing on shit. Yesterday, there was an incident with Oklahoma law enforcement in, um, what was the name of the town? Uh, Ardmore. Uh, Ardmore, Oklahoma. I would like to get your thoughts and feelings on, you know, what happened, what was going on, why everything happened, and how you felt about the situation, if that's okay. So what were what what started um the journey to Ardmore? Yeah, so uh I can get descriptive of with you too. Or mm -hmm. that, that, that. Yeah, uh we was pulling into Ardmore. One of my brothers was trying to get a coffee and there was two police officers there. And then he he put the, he filled the gas he put a car up with gas and leave his coffee. But I guess the lights were dim and the lights weren't off. So it's a store like probably a couple blocks ahead of us whenever we make a ride out the store that we left that had the two officers prior. And then we pulled in after he uh, flicked his lights and then we pulled in, uh, hold on. We pulled into the, uh, the next door that was about two blocks down. And then we already parked and everything. Like we turned the key off, car out the ignition and then an officer, uh, an officer had told, had uh, told the driver to open the door and was 
talking to the driver, and then an officer had came to the passenger door, and it was on child lock. He's not gonna, he was knocking on the door, tapping it with his flashlight or whatever he was tapping it with. And then I'm trying to tell him it's, I'm trying to tell him it's on child lock, but he's not, he's not understanding it's on child lock. So, you know, I say her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amber Thank assists me. Amber asking. assists me. So she like, the door is on child lock, and you're not supposed to address the backseat passenger anyways. And then so he's like. All right, since you want to get rowdy and want to get extra whenever nobody got extra and really addressed the situation how it's supposed to be addressed, as always. You know, he was, he got, what's the, you know, he got into however he felt because she said that he made everybody get out the car or whatever and they searched the car for about 45 minutes. He was sitting in the cold. Yeah, basically harassment really so like did you feel violated did you feel like they were doing their job did you feel like it was extra like how was the vibe in that situation oh yeah they was only doing their job to a certain extent because you can only search for a certain amount of time and it's a whole bunch going on do you feel like the search was conducted because that was simple protocol or because um, they were asserting their power. Definitely asserting their power. It looked like, like when you said, like when you said he was training that dude, he act like he wasn't training that dude. Like he's giving this man instruction after instruction and he's following. Like everything's over. It's been 30 minutes at this time. And he done brought him over here to research everything and went to every side of the car. So, so it's like, we just got to take it, you know, hey, you can't do nothing but ride through it. Yeah. Or you're going to be in danger. Right. As most of you know who are going to be watching this video, um, you know my activism and what I do. And I have to apologize to you two young men right now because I forget a lot of times the danger that y'all face that I don't, being a white woman. I forget the danger that comes with simple words. Yeah. That comes with the color that you wake up every day to your skin that I don't and that's what happened I opened my mouth and I spoke as if our rights meant anything while you were in the car and that was very self-centered and selfish of me so I apologize but does it make you feel some type of way when people stand up for you or would you rather for people to just shut the fuck up because it could harm you later I mean, yeah, yeah to. Situation. I mean, yeah, yeah. To, to a certain extent. Like, what's your message to the allies out there? Like me, like somebody like me. What's your message to the people out there who daily are, like, in the front line standing for y'all? Oh, Maybe yeah, if somebody wants to stop by and, you and definitely help. definitely have to take that into consideration. You can definitely be putting the person in the situation of danger for sure. Because it's not safe. And also, do do what they want when they feel like they don't get accountability for it. So. That's just how it is, and it's messed up. Hey, Say that word for me again. They don't get accountability That's for the right. actions that they do when they abuse their power for no reason. So what was your take on the situation? Like, Because you were probably one of the less affected out of the bunch that I observed until it got to where they were being very um, extra, like more than necessary. Like. At first, you were like, okay, you know, everybody is cool. Just let them do their job. But then whenever it got to where they were beyond disrespectful, you were like, hey, you know, this ain't okay. And this ain't right. Because, yeah, like, I felt like at first, I thought they were going to do their job and uh, just be like, y'all, y'all good. But bro was acting cocky and talking, like, really acting like he wanted to, like, defend himself from, like, he was going to get harmed or something. And um, you know, it really. And then when I, you say, bro, you you referring to the police officer? Yeah, to the police officer, to the uh, officer. And um, I really felt some type of way when my cut co my my cousin that was in the car with us got in handcuffed. You know, for no reason they just found some baggies, but the baggies were for anything, and they put them in handcuffs and, and was talking to us reckless. Like we were, like we're not nobody, so I ain't, I ain't really like that. So, yeah. yes. 
so, found no residue or anything. It was ridiculous. For real, for real. Right. The, what, the police probably, I think, in my perception, and this is just my um, analysis of it, I feel like they would have stopped searching, you know, if I wouldn't have said shit. But the, but the fact that, you know, I would, I was telling them, you know, what's your badge number? I'm going to want this video camera after that they had to find something. They had to find something to yeah. make it like they were not going to stop had looking. to solidify it. They, yeah, they, they had they to. They was doing that as from action to intention. They had an intention to prey on us and, and, and really harass us for no reason. Right, and like, they ended up no finding reason, a like, little baggie underneath crazy. my seats which the officers came out and asked whose it was, and I was like, it's probably mine. Um, that's probably been there for a long time, because in Colorado, I smoke outside of my car. I don't smoke around my kids, you know. Shout out to all the can of moms out there watching that support. You know, we don't smoke around our children. We follow the rules. So my car is my sanctuary for my, my medication. That's where I medicate. So it was very possible that it's been there for a long time, but... That man searched and searched and searched, and I say for at least an hour and a half. Man, pop the hood. Pop the hood of the yeah, car. Yeah, just to find that little, little itty bitty, little he itty bitty. Put, he said people put diapers yes. in the hood. Yes. Oh my God. Like, bro, that was deep. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to have to fact check that. That really pissed him off, too. <laughs> like, like, bro. Well, I have something to pry your doors open. I was if like, you, what? If you want to fact check, like, what? Yeah, so every time we would say something, and I say we as me as the collective uh, in the group of people that were being harassed, because I was really the one saying a lot of shit. Again, I apologize. But every time I would say something, they would turn it around as if I was being hostile, even with a calm, low voice, not looking them in their eyes, putting my head down. Like, I was following all of the rules that they say with the police, and he still was very upset about us even questioning anything that was going on, as if we didn't have rights. So what, what, what would you like for people to take away from this incident? Because that's how Oklahoma welcomed y'all as artists entering their state to come and perform for a charity event. So how would you like to let viewers know how that made you feel? How did Oklahoma welcome you? Like, you gotta cross your T's and not your eyes. Nah, for real, cause like, stuff gonna happen though. We ain't expected, like, for real, like, we traveling, trying to get to our destination, we got stuff to do, we got business to take care of. Boy, as soon as we cross the Red we, River, we baby. cross it, like, we got this tatted on us, we were able, for real, like, we stand for Oklahoma and Texas, you feel me? So when we got here, they felt like we and rocking with us for real. You know, I, I was, we were going to end, but that's something I got to touch on before we end because that's really dope that y'all bring Oklahoma and Texas together. Oklahoma is left out a lot of times on the underground rap scene game. And they don't hate it because we root it both ways. And so yeah, and people don't gonna, even realize. that together and then it's going to explode. And it's gonna but explode. we're the ones who blow up, motherfuckers. Like Lil Flip, uh, Do or Die, Tila, Fat Pat, all of them started at the convention centers here in Oklahoma. Man, <laughs> Southwest yes. Niggas don't be knowing that. Yes. Bro. Shit, I'm a music head for real. So, so like yeah. Yeah, my yeah. very first concert, I watched, uh, uh, who's 25 lighters on my dresser? Yes, yes sir. Man. I got to get paid. Yeah. He was opening for somebody. Yeah. So that means he was just like, you know, like, like us, like at right. the beginning, like he was opening for somebody. So yeah, that's how artist, long I've been. Anybody looking to be an artist and you're looking to open for somebody, do not pay. Because <laughs> that is not what you're worth. You do what you're worth. And you do not pay for anything that you got to perform. Say that, yeah, that is yeah. Because you can always, doing? you can always offer the promoter to sell tickets. You, if, if if you know your brand is worth it and people out there are gonna come see you, you sell tickets versus paying paying to pay to play. That's really what it is. Because there's pay. so many people doing that in the law, and it's like even younger dudes that's in middle school they looking to to pay to perform. Now I will pay for Nicholas to like 
open up for Twister or La Boosie. Yeah, see, that's different. Or, yeah, that's I will pay for a spot. You utilize that. They Fact. Just doing it dry. And then Twister played my baby song no. on stage. So it, it means something. Like, when you, yeah. yeah. But if you just open it for some local shit, yeah. And then you just going home dry. Like, yeah, I just did that. What yeah. Did, what, what you do? Yeah, you do nothing. What you do? Yeah. What you do? What about one more piece of advice for, for independent artists out there? What else? One more thing before we go. I just, they get rocky for real life. Get, get your business mentality right. Man. Your craft always going to be there. Get your business mentality right. That's and don't be scared right to now. sleep on the floor. Sometimes you're going to have to yeah, thug it out. Know, well, you I was sleeping in cars it, before, I got to, before I got to <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> Bro, yeah. was thugging and sleeping in cars, going to hey. hit a stain, nigga, then going to the homie house, nigga. No, no After cap, nigga. That, everything we rap about for real, like. For real? Like, nigga, ain't no cap in nigga rap. I mean, my mama well, always Well, now y'all going to the car lots and getting them out for off straight cash. Oh so that's the that's the come up from from the bottom to the up. But they say when you rise from the bottom, you rise everybody with you. And, and I really like that about y'all's organization and y'all's group that your main focus i mean the first thing your mind was on was the youth that you can help so i think that's something that people need to yeah. check you out where can everybody right. check y'all out at you can follow me on instagram at 2300 back in baby with two c's you know what yeah. about you you can follow me on instagram wildland poppy six show all right y'all it's oh, taylor's voice oh, y'all go get y'all go listen to that go it's out right now everything video out too shout out to nice. you feel me what's up yeah. All right, thank you. It's going to take blood going to be shed, but it's going to it has to start with the gangs cuz y'all got the most power and that's where the most power is. That's where it's most rooted. And we got to come together for real for real. And shit, you really just got to work on forgiveness. That's what comes first. So you think the way to um stop and hold police accountable and then I say stop because when we say defund the police, we don't mean that we don't want police. I think that the solution to them having so much power is us and our communities coming together, like you were saying, the Cribs, the Bloods, the G's, everybody coming together and being one against, you know, the brutality versus us all being separated. Yeah, it's going to take a... Yeah, it's going to take a... You're going to have to... One, it's going to be pride. That got to go. And two, yes. Yes, he don't get along with him. Or he probably got into a situation and murdered his homie. Or he he dissed his. Or what color he got in his pocket. Or whatever. Nigga, shit. This is for, this is for the generation. This is for the generational... Man, oh man, that's where I just Broken did what chains. you were talking about. For real. This Broken is, chains. Like, that's what you're real. trying to convey is and, that and you're trying to break real. them chains. The and chains of separation. And and we are like, man, I be trying to tell them. Like, I be trying to tell everybody my age, younger than me. Like, How old are you? We are the prize. I'm 19. Ooh, we that's... black. Like, we are that. Like, y'all don't be knowing that. We are the power. Like, for Do you real, believe like, you are a king? God is within. Okay, okay. USA Today published on September 30th, 2021, that police kill more people in Oklahoma than any other state, and many deaths go unreported. Oklahoma has the highest mortality rate of police violence in all 50 states and the highest rate of underreporting the killings. There are over 30 documented sundown towns in Oklahoma, and the effects of the sundown town ideology is still felt today. Everyone in the car that night felt violated. Our rights were violated. Everything about that situation was violation. On Friday, some even boarded up windows. 7 News reporter Dallas Payton joins us live from Liberty Lake Park with the latest on how those rumors got started. Dallas. Monty, Caitlin, this all started after a local rap artist went live on Facebook expressing his feelings about the events that are going on in the world and also saying he was returning home to Lawton from Texas to shoot a music video in this park. Black Power. Black Power. 
Rest in peace to Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton, and Marcus Garvey. Homie, how many ain't gon' die? How many? You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, I ain't with that marching. No disrespect to him, but I'm with that action, man. Let's get violent. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How many they gon' die before we stand up? How many? Kill up for no reason, even when we got our hands up. Open up your eyes, they can't stand up.